Hello, my name is Jane Nguyen. Um, the architect that I chose was Lina Bobardi. Please apologize for my Italian and Portuguese pronunciations. I took French, that didn't help at all. Um, we actually met before at a cafe. Um, she was, and we talked about her life, her passions, and also everything in between. She was born in 1914, Rome, Italy, and died in 1992, San Paulo, Brazil. She studied at the College of Architecture in Rome, Italy. Um, very traditional during that time because of the left-wing fascist regime. Um, so very classical. <laughs> She moved to Milan, which is known for the industrial um, area of, of Italy in the new avant-garde, and worked on the Geoponte between the years of 1940s and 1945. When I say worked, I meant like she was more like a freelance in, her off, in his office and also the editorial for his magazine. She considered herself as last of the humanist um, with Ponte himself, in the sense of humans, are a source of infant possibilities aiming for a balance of physical, spiritual, moral, and intellectual uh, faculties, meaning the design comes from humans. She immigrated to Brazil with her husband, uh, Pietro Mari Bardi, in 1945 to escape their political past, which later um, influenced her later architecture. Um, the controversy, this is with the Western canon. The Western canon is that Okay, first, she's an Italian architect. She was Italian born. However, she, most of her work is built in Brazil. So does she, is she a representative of Italy or she represents Brazil? So the question I have is, if a person was foreign born, but they reside and adopt the culture of another country that isn't their native country, should we consider them as a citizen of their native of home country? Brazilian or Italian, we must consider she is one of the greatest modern architects. The first case study is the Casa de Vidra, the glass house, her residential home, where in the international side, it's very clear, very machine-like imagery. And also she liked to use mass production in the sense of steel, glass, and concrete. Um, and if we comparing to the Vin uh, Villas of Awa and also the Farnsworth house, um, look, she also followed Lucubier's uh, three out of five points of architecture. Um, first, the pelotis clearly stated underneath the free play and the free facade. Also, she did took inspiration by the Domo Indo House from Lucuzvia, um, where it is two concrete slides being supported by those uh, pelotis in the stair in um, the middle. And if we look at the facade, the glass uh, the enclosed glass walls are very similar to the farm's house um, by Mies van der Rohe. However, if we look at it closely, um, it is a greenhouse in reverse. She allows flora and fauna to embrace and frame by steel in glass, uh, which is an essential part of a party pre. She did not suppress nor sacrifice the domestic qualities of her interior. Look at her stuff. They were art collectors. They traveled. They wanted to live in their home. Um, to succumb to me's um, less is more minimalism. So you can have form and it to be a lovely and functioning um, home for yourself. And it's also was constructed in 1950. Um, looking at the San Paulo Museum of Art in Brazil, um, look at the Primera study. In her communist background, um, she wanted to preserve the people's public place, which is also helpful for the wishes of the investor who sold the plot to the city um, to the government. Yes. Um, and if you look at the privilege, uh, the people are very demanding in that sketch. And by looking at the architecture, she's done that with the international side, it's very machine like. The glass is being framed by the concrete, and also those concrete legs, that material is supporting the entire thing. Um, again, you can draw inspiration for the Doma Indo House by Luc Goupier. Um, again, another person who was very prominent in Brazil was Oscar Myers, the King of Curves. Um, comparing to the rigidness of the Breton brew, the brutless raw concrete highlighted red in um, um, Bardi's work is 
it's a contrast to Oscar Mayer's art center where the red is being highlighted with the coolness and the plasticity of the concrete. And um, another um, thing is that because it's all glass infill, it is not very good for the art because art is light sensitive. Fun fact, when inaugurated in 1968, Queen Elizabeth II was present at the same morning. To the um, third case study, the Espirito Santo de Credo Church. Um, and again, this church was very special. It was built in 1976 and 1982, and it's very different from the international side that she has used because she needs to know that because these are developing countries, um, there has to be economic constraints. And the economic constraints doesn't mean that she can really afford the new concrete. So the concretes are structural components um, of the of the building. So she looks at the uh, tradition of vernacular building uh, techniques and materials of the area, which is brick, um, and implemented it in because she wanted the community to be a part of it to lower the labor costs and um, only high amateur workers. There was um, so it's industry there is making bricks and also the reused bricks from an um, of a landfill for the walls, very similar to the works of um, Laurie Baker, the British Indian architect. And however, it's still having that modest take in the sense of look at these pure geometrical forms of the circular. Um, again, but she didn't leave alone the whole colonization of nature. Look at these. Um, she wanted nature to really uh, subdue the building itself. And also design-wise, it's also a water collector, interesting enough. But reflecting this as into the Western canon, um, it is not that monolithic, it's, not, it's also made, yes, it's made of stone. However, um, in the sense of the international side, she only used it to really conserve the economic constraints of it. She wants to make um, a most of the money that's used and she wasn't afraid to use uh, vernacular architecture around um, and also get the people involved as well something very different from the entire side where they want something new and they want all machine built but everything here was, was built by hand um, so but body is very conservational because of her past however i think we have to recognize she's one of the greatest modernist architects and she can not afraid to use vernacular architecture from Brazil that she has adopted the culture. Thank you very much. And that was the presentation.